Hello, my name is Nadia. I'm going to be your bitch jockey for this session. <laughs> keep it fast, keep it tight. So, um, I'm, let's just get into it. I'm going to ask you, all of you, to introduce yourself, what you do, and how you got started. Pick a boy, any boy. <laughs> chop, chop. Okay, I can start. But basically, like, like many uh, interesting things, uh, everything started by accident. Uh, basically, there was four of us, uh, four friends, uh, drinking coffee and maybe wine, I don't remember. And uh, we thought about idea to clean up the, our country in one day. Basically, all the, all the countryside of illegal trash. And um, it seemed to be catchy enough, and we had a team in uh, the 20 people joining us in uh, one week. And uh, sure enough, eight months later, we got uh, 50,000 people to clean up the country in one day. And the story kind of... I'm sorry, what? 50,000? 50,000. Okay. So, so it was kind of one-off action. So it was a kind of one-off action, uh, but uh, it uh, was inspiring enough for other people. It, so uh, after the action, there was uh, lots of calls uh, to do the similar thing in other places. So we started sharing uh, the country cleaning manual and uh, soon enough, uh, organizing conferences. And now, uh, about 98 countries have done similar, uh, similar actions, organized groups to clean up their countries. OK. Anybody else? Antuna? I, I guess many people are curious about the WeShare community. And who are you and how you got started? Um, so uh, back in 2010, uh, I was finishing my studies in a business school. And I was just coming back from a long travel in South America. And I really wanted to go back to South America. I was in Paris. I was a little bit depressed. Um, and I started blogging about the sharing economy because I felt like it was really, really inspiring, inspiring what was happening in the sharing economy. At that time, in 2010, people were like, sharing and economics together? This is weird. And, and well, I started blogging ab uh, about this. And I used Twitter a, a lot, not only to to, to to share what, what, I, what I knew uh, about this, not only to share links, but more important, to connect with people. So every time I would find somebody using the hashtag Colcons for collaborative consumption, uh, if this person was in India or in Japan or in, in Brazil, I would say, hey, we should Skype or we should you know, connect. And we would Skype very, very, very easily. I think uh, Christian has a very similar uh, story. And, and I, when I would meet a, a person who would live like uh, in France or in Germany or in England, I, I, I would be like, OK, I, I can catch a flight uh, with Ryanair or EasyJet. It's very cheap. And I, and I would go to Madrid or to uh, Berlin or to whatever. So I traveled uh, in Europe. And, and we started a, a Facebook group to connect those people with no real vision. Uh, behind it, just just uh, just uh, willing to connect those people and to make them interact. So uh, they started to interact in this Facebook group, um, and they started also to interact offline. And this is something I guess we will go deeper afterward. The fact that offline is super important when you build communities. Uh, but like this is in 2011, and I can remember a, a conversation with with Christian. And once he told me, uh, you know, you you're adding people in your Facebook group, and you introduce themselves in your Facebook group. Those guys, if they want to be part of your group of your community, they should introduce themselves. And this is something like. That has been so powerful. Is this the first time I say that to Christian? But this, this, is, this, is, this has been so powerful to build WeShare. I, I actually, if I never had this advice, I'm not sure WeShare we would be so powerful right now. The fact that people have to introduce themselves in, in a group is super important because that shows that they want to be, to be part of it. So we started with a Facebook group and uh, uh, with meetings happening every, every month in Paris. Very soon we had meetings uh, happening other, in other cities in Europe, and then we had 10 Facebook groups, and now we have 40 Facebook groups. Fabulous, and... Antonin. I'm going to cut okay, you sorry. off. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christian? 
Right, so uh, my name is Christian and I uh, work for the Open Knowledge Foundation, which is a nonprofit based in uh, Cambridge in the UK, um, working on um, all these different kinds of, of uh, open projects, uh, open government data projects, uh, open spending projects, open economics, open glam, um, open culture, etc. Um, but what is most uh, relevant for this session is, of course, uh, the fact that it's also a global network uh, of local groups, um, currently a little over 25 local groups in, in different countries all over the world. Um, a little Eurocentric right now, but growing at a really fast pace um, with ambassadors coming on board uh, several every week uh, in, in new countries. So uh, basically uh, the Open Knowledge Foundation uh, seeks to um, open knowledge, um, knowledge being also data, of course, but not uh, exclusively data, but knowledge in the a, in a, in a broadest sense of the word, uh, and not only open it up, uh, but also see that it becomes useful and becomes used. But how do you actually start? Uh, well, um, it started a little over 10 years ago. Uh, so basically, it, it, was, it, it was a demand for uh, creating a, a, a discussion around openness um, that uh, soon led to uh, people grouping together, uh, mainly in Europe, but but uh, but at a at a growing rate also in other places. Through what a mailing list? What? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, mailing list and, and other tools. Uh, but that led to the the need to actually structure things. Uh, so that that led to to what we refer to as local groups, as as a as a um, unified way of of uh, referring to these groups uh, across uh, across international borders. Okay. Yes. yes, so uh, Make Sense is a platform where we find social entrepreneurs all around the world. We ask them about concrete problems they are facing, we call it challenges, and when they post it on the website, we mobilize people to help them. Uh, so it's a community because behind the website, there's a whole community building the tools and the methods to solve the challenge, and we started it with a friend, his name is uh, Roman, but now he's uh, in bank, uh, working in JP Morgan, but he's still a good guy. And so, uh, and so uh, well, that's okay, we need uh, all the worlds to come together. And so basically we started a, a trip all around Asia to meet social entrepreneurs, do videos, and a little bit like uh, what Antonin was saying, meeting people in real life and connecting them all together, and that's how we started Make Sense. So I'd like to ask, um, I mean, we're not here for me, so I'm not going to talk about myself. Ah, who are you? <laughs> um, no, really, I'm not going to talk about myself. But um, so, does somebody want to answer the question of what what threats are there to your being able to keep going as a community or as an organization? Do you want to? Mm, sure. There's um, there's several, obviously, but uh, I think most pressing thing for all kind of uh, kind of activism based things is like. The, how long you stay inspired, or how long you are um, kind of just uh, running on the, I don't know, on the fun of it, and and how do you keep it going, or uh, does it kind of ebb and flow through time, or or the other way to make it more professional, to have more like kind of paid staff and to do more things uh, this way, or the other way to move it more kind of crowdsourced way if you can kind of send out tasks to the like thousands of potential volunteers. These are some of the ways to do it. But in our, our case, it's uh, uh, the Let's Do It World uh, organization is basically all countries are kind of separate teams and the international team is only kind of coordination and uh, communication body. So uh, there's, uh, and the volunteer group is a big one. It's uh, over 8 million people have taken part in the cleanups in the, in the countries now. Sorry, what? 8 million people. Anybody else? Threats to being able to keep w doing what you're doing? I, I think there's a, as a big challenge in any uh, community that, that, that grows. Because uh, initially, uh, you usually have some kind of centralized coordination, that, that, like the people who took the initiative to begin with. And, and as the, the community ke keeps growing, then of course that puts a, 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 a bigger and bigger uh, workload or a burden on, on that coordination. So moving from, from a small scale to a larger scale, and, and uh, at the same time, you know, remaining true to the cause and, 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 and all that, that's, that's a big challenge. And, and of course, uh, distributing autonomy into cells um, and, and keep things consistent. I think that's a, a, a 
a huge challenge. Uh, also something that we're experiencing uh, uh, with, with, with the growth right now. How about you guys, we share? No? The, the, um, the main challenge we have, I think, like these communities work because no one is paid, they are all passionate. And so like, how do you make them keep on being passionate? Uh, and also I think personally, for the people starting the community, it's a bit hard because you're all the time with passionate people about your topic and stuff. And they think that all your life is living for that. And then you receive message all the time and stuff. So they're also personally for the guys, uh, I think starting the communities, it's something you have to be careful. Like how to not like all your entire life goes into answering Facebook message of people passionate by the same thing as you are. But also so that's personally. And, and then uh, as makes sense is growing, the change we have is a little bit the same. Like how do we keep the same spirit that we had at the beginning? Like how to keep it fun? And, and motivate people so that they keep having the passion. It's also something because the more it gets known, the more it gets a bit institutionalized. And so then how do you get institutionalized but at the same time remain really soft and, and flexible as the beginnings? That's one of the big challenges we're having right now. Um, I, I remember reading when Aaron Schwartz dead, dead you know, the, the activist for uh, open, uh, and open knowledge and, um, and I, I remember reading, the most important is you. And I think that's something that is really important for activists that start uh, communities which become movements. Um, if you've been able to do that, it's because you have energy, you're passionate, but also you, <laughs> you, you keep with this energy. So, uh, and and those, what's happening now with the web, I mean, you start something out of a Facebook group and then it, it, it becomes big. And, and when it uh, doesn't um, fulfill your, your expectations, it can be so hard, you know? And, and it, if it really fulfills your expectations, it, it, the, the, you know, it's, it's amazing what you, what you feel, you know? So, so going through those uh, moments in your life, being quite young as we are, is, is at the psychological level is not always easy. So you, you should be also psychologically, psychologically able to go through those, uh, those moments. And to answer your question, I think like the biggest challenge is to build a sustainable uh, community, uh, s s staying true to your story and to your core values. And this is hard. I mean, as you, as, as you grow, as just the guy said, it's not that easy. So this is where I come in. Of course, I have an agenda <laughs> with this session. I, I ask myself, how is it that in this space where we talk about collaboration and sharing, it's, it, you know, when, and we're different communities and we have similar problems, how, how is it that there's so little collaboration between the different communities? I mean, how would we make more efficient use of, of resources and, and the assets that we have between us? Any? Yeah, I think the cooperation thing is an interesting thing. It, uh, in all of these kind of movements, it tend to be kind of silos as well, and, uh, that we don't uh, share the kind of know-how and the things between us. And I think we should do it more, and we should kind of standardize the, the ways maybe, or in technology as well, to do it uh, better, because we waste lots of uh, know-how and resources because of that. Yeah, I agree 100% uh, on that. Um, I, th I think that we, this is new. I think in a way it's really new what we're building. So uh, there is a lack of knowledge on how to grow uh, communities. Um, so yeah, of course we should share more and spend probably more time together, but it also takes time for people to know each other and, 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 and to trust each other. So it's also fine, you know, so, so that people can, can trust each other more. I, I also think that we need to realize every one, every one of us, especially when, we, when you start uh, a movement like that, that behind the brand, behind the values, behind what you're trying to do, you're, tr you're trying to achieve something bigger. And, and having this conversation and, and talking about what we really want to achieve, what, what has meaning for us, is, 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 is probably super important. So that's why you know, we had this conversation and I said we should organize more, uh, like we should organize an event only on communities, 
You know, like uh, we could have a panel on business model for communities. We could have a panel on, on how to sustain yourself and, and the health of uh, the founders. And I don't know. Um, so yeah, let's let's share more uh, afterwards. Sure. I personally feel that um, one of the one of the hardest things to get a grip on is one making sense like ways for us as a community to make sense of what we're doing and where we're going together, where we are now, where we want to move next, that in the day-to-day -day work of keeping our communities energized, it's easy somehow to get lost in all of this. Um, and, and the other one, the, the other point I feel quite strongly about is the l lack of legibility. So the lack of, of an understanding of how our different projects, initiatives, communities complement each other and where, you know, where we can, where the incentives are wrongly stacked so that we're not collaborating because there are incentives that are actually standing in the way of that and how to address them. And I, we were talking about, you know, about this, but we didn't really go into much detail. What, any reflections? Any? I, I think the, the whole uh, question about how to uh, how to share resources is not necessarily a, a question of uh, whether to run things in the same way, mm -hmm. uh, but rather also because you know we do have different courses and, and, and different goals and everything. So I think the the, the 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 way to go would be to see where all these uh, uh, communities overlap in terms of, of um, what direction they're going in, etc., and then uh, collaborate on those, because then you have this. Uh, um, this, this strength in, uh, in having your, uh, your own autonomous way of, of doing things, which is true to how it started, but at the same time you have this huge ab ability to scale up. Uh, like one, uh, one suggestion could be to collaborate on some, some shared campaigns, for instance. Uh, I remember uh, we had a burst of energy in our network uh, around Open Data Day last February, which really brought a lot of, uh, uh, of our groups together in the, in the same day and that could be spread across several communities if, if this is uh, a campaign that, that these communities could actually relate to and, and, and use in, in, in their daily, uh, daily work and, and, and their mission. Yeah, I totally agree that uh, we should see the overlapping spots and uh, take a kind of common uh, mission where we could try uh, to see the, where the kind of cooperation can happen. And, and I think the working by campaigns or projects you do together, it's really concrete. And so like it m really makes you collaborate and learn more about each other. Like for example, if I have a lot of challenges of social entrepreneurs to design their solutions, they need to open the data of their government or stuff like that. Then like it's easy for me to mobilize the community during that event because they see, oh, we are still solving challenges, but in the same time we work with open data and we met another community. So if it's, I think it's, if it's project-based, it works well, but each time it's trying to create like a collective, you know, like something, oh, let's build a collective, uh, let's be a little circle, and, and then we see what we, like it's more complicated. So, I, I'd like to ask you guys who have been sitting and watching us and listening us, invite you into this conversation. So how, I'd like to see a show of hands. How many people are involved in more, th in, let's say, 10 or more communities? Okay, so, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. Five or more communities? Two or more communities? Okay. So, do you have any suggestions for how you manage, <laughs> how, how you manage navigating all of these different spaces? And I'd actually like to hear from, from others. Could somebody pass the mic? I think it's just a matter of prioritizing. And just, you know, some communities uh, ask for more intensive uh, moderation and being there present than others. And it really is much of a, a way of seeking your way and making your own priorities choosing. It's not only making service to the communities. They save themselves. It's okay. The community will exist afterward, always. always. 
So are you involved in, in community management in any of these communities? Um, maybe a bit of, I'm a bit of a connector, so I'm uh, mostly thinking of new initiatives and combining people to do them. And so I'm moving around in different communities. And uh, I, yeah, well, I'm just prioritizing my time. So Anyone else? Any easy. suggestions, processes or tools or personal strategies? I, yeah, so um, the, the real problem about having many communities is having many communities. So really what you want is to have one community. You have not just lo lots of little networks, but one social web. And that's what we're working at the W3C with linked data and uh, web ID to, do, to essentially build a distributed social web. And so at that point, you don't have the problem anymore of duplicating the content on every single different network. You wouldn't have a problem of privacy, of having your data in bigger, uh, bigger players' hands. You wouldn't have the problem of network effects of very large companies owning the whole network and all the data. So really, it's an architectural problem that needs to be solved to be able to get to dealing with communities in a much more efficient way. And that's, um, I think, the, the, the way you need, one needs to move forward. Well, what about the different... So I guess some, com some communities have some kind of commercial revenue, other ones don't. What about the different models, I guess, that keep the communities going? Is it compatible with having just one big, I guess, social network? Or well, of course, do you, you, don't, you don't want to have one social network that is completely centralized. You have a distributed social networks that all can cooperate together, right? That's the, that's the aim of the social web. Not just like the web, you can have different web pages linked together. The social web is about linking social communities together to form one big social community so you can, you can authenticate to communities you want to without having to move your data. Now this is what, we're, what I'll be speaking about. There's a little hackathon on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, and I'll be explaining how you can build this type of thing, uh, how you build a link, link data web, how you get access control, and how all of this works on Sunday. Yeah, on the technical side, this can definitely work, but I think the, the other, other point is on more of like different cultures and different groups because the, you know, every group has their own communication network and, and how would uh, they, for example, share or do some kind of cooperations together. Uh, this is not technically solvable problem. No, sorry, I wasn't waving. I wasn't waving at you, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the thing I want to say is um, definitely prioritizing, but me, for example, since three months, I don't have no internet at home. Sorry, can you speak I'd slower? Have, I, can't I have no internet at home, which helps me to prioritize between my private communities and my professional communities, and helps me not to mix up things. And so I, if I do have internet access, I try to manage all the online communities and, and, or s online channels to um, to, with the communities that I need to in the time that I have, because otherwise I feel that you have not enough energy resource for the real life community somehow. And I must say, like for example, I'm from Berlin. We came here um, as part of the D Collective, which is a co-working space based on design thinking, and we just ran a workshop here as well. And um, sometimes, yeah, through Facebook, I get to lo know a lot of stuff, but half of it I just get to know through uh, non-digital communication. I, I think you have to divide your time between that as well. I'm not sure if that is a... There's a hand over there. In the no, f f first... Okay, uh, we, we had a talk in the, in the lunch break about actually this and how hard it is to organize uh, things on Facebook because it's privately owned, to be short. And so it's absolutely against good knowledge management good community management, it's only about good advertising. And I uh, made some, uh, some uh, post on the vision wall here, when you go out here, the vision wall, uh, supporting things like uh, what the colleague just said, uh, bringing uh, openness to the social networks, because we really need an alternative to Facebook, which is actually kind of prison for us. Uh, you cannot get out there and so, and I'm no hacker or something, but uh, this has uh, much to do with to make it manageable. And uh, prioritizing sounds always fine, but I ask myself, why is it so hard? 
because you do want to do justice to all your communities. And so you have to make your retreat, maybe one silent day for a week, <laughs> where you actually find what's your own way and purpose. And then you go back and check out which community you should just leave alone and uh, prioritize to others. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I think the technical part is important, which platform people use and stuff, but in the end, I think like what makes people belong to a community is not if they use Facebook or if they use another tool. Like for example, we have a big community in China, but they don't have Facebook and I don't have uh, Renren and I don't understand nothing about Renren. Uh, but but then we are able to communicate through mails, through sometimes through Skype, sometimes. So the, the technology thing doesn't matter, but they all feel like they're part of the same community. It's just that sometimes it's uh, more complicated to coordinate. But if people are really interested, like no matter which tools they use in the end, I, I think it's like which language do you speak if you want to to really be part of the, uh, if you arrive in France and you want to integrate in the community, then you will learn the language and you will like get into it if you go to another country. I think it's the same kind of things with the technical tools. I have to ask you, how, sorry. Wait, uh, how did you end up with a community in China on a platform you don't, you can't actually communicate on? Oh, because there was a, a, another guy from Tahiti, where I come from, that was working in China at that time. And uh, then uh, he was a friend of my cousin, and he says, "Wow, that's really cool. Makes sense. I've seen it on the web." And he wanted to start, and he quits his job, and he starts a little community there, but not on Facebook. So we had one. Um, hello, my name is Sibyl from Valhalla, Paris. Um, yes, I agree with you that it's really our next step that we have learned to share in the same community, but then after there is the next ego step that uh, the community as to share with another. And what mm, mm, the way I'm working on it, it's uh, using governance and using new ways of governance. Um, the name is holacracy. When you, uh, there is a double link, that means one of, the, of one community will have power decision in, another, in the friend community and the other, uh, okay, there is an exchange. Because I think, um, very often we have the same really aim, but we are working different. And so by sharing governance, that could really help. So I have a question, or actually it's a reflection. I don't know if it's just me that's crazy or what, but every time I go to these events, um, conferences, whatever, you're on a stage, it's a dog and pony show, I get the sense that there's this underlying competition for attention and resources. I, I don't know if it's just me being a very competitive person or if it's, if it's there. So is the competition there or isn't it? What do you guys think? And, and where does it come from if it is there? Among the communities, com competition. I guess so. Yeah, in the sharing, collaborative economy. We're all talking, talking about projects, talking about ad infinitum. Well, personally, I, oh, personally, I don't think that's very, that's very uh, visible to me. But I think that, that you know, there might be you know, this, you know, communities uh, overlapping and, and, and people being involved in more than one community. And, and in that sense, you can, you can lose community members to other communities. So maybe you have some competition there. But I think that the reason why communities uh, emerge is that you know, if they manage to find a cost that is not already covered. So in that sense, there's a difference between the communities. Also, the, 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 all of us sitting here, we do different things. I, I'm not necessarily reflecting on some of the things that's been asked. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm not necessarily thinking that it, it might be a good idea to try to streamline everything and have everything done in the same way. And that goes for technical platforms and, and whatever, because I think that takes away part of the authenticity of many communities. I think uh, what communities are all about is people. So you know, that's, that's why communities are different. And uh, I think I, I would be much more in favor of uh, having some kind of um, way to 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 share um, 
like it was said here, a governance structure and everything, like put your materials online for others to pick them up um, um, and not necessarily have that be in one place and, or like an umbrella organization to deal with all the communities, but just basically try to be as transparent as possible because that way, you know, people can pick up the, the bits and pieces of your system, of your way of doing things, of your uh, spirit and, and repurpose that for whatever they want to do. Uh, like remixing <laughs> or like sampling, um, um, you know, bits and pieces from, from other communities and build your own. I think if, if we all did that, I'm pretty sure a lot of new communities, emerging communities could skip some steps. Uh, so, so maybe that's, that's, that's something that I would like to take away from this, uh, from this panel and this, this session. So what can we do? Uh, is there anything that requires like a, a coordinated collective effort of us as a community to see happen? Are we a community? Are the people working in the sharing collaborative economy, are we a community? Do, are, is there something that we're striving towards together or, or not? What do you guys think? Maybe like a movement. Yeah, I think we are kind of spread out movement of kind of different smaller groups, but obviously there, there is overlap there and, uh, and we could kind of synchronize at least. Obviously each group has, can and have to act uh, on its own. But it's, uh, it's a question of better how to exchange information better, it's kind of communication uh, between the groups, and so synchronize some of the things, like organize, let's say, um, actions together or, or learn from each other. Yes? I just wanted to say that uh, probably communities emerge around uh, uh, shared uh, motivation, shared issues, shared. Uh, interests. So there's no point for me to having one community because we have several issues. And so the point is networking one community with each other, with another one, or maybe with another person, or with a company, or with a government. So the point is having a, a network of values, and it doesn't matter so much what it is. The you know the the connected peer. It could be a community, or it could be a single person, a single project, or you know, whatever else. The important thing is that we, you know, we make a community around shared issues and we work together as long as we share a mission or an interest or something like that. Just wanted to say. Uh, yeah, maybe something to rebound on uh, your uh, idea of uh, uh, opening like knowledge and stuff that we have. Uh, maybe there should be something like, you know, there's the creative commons. So it's a commons ground for the creatives around the world, like how they should work together to build on the work of the other. Maybe there should be, should be something around community commons or stuff like that. And maybe if people start to share knowledge, build projects together, then they will feel part of a community or of a movement. But I think it has to be really practical at the beginning because just having the same value or the same will will not like get us... Uh, Really, if I, it will not get, get us to f get things done. It will still like uh, like the politicians what they are doing and stuff. So, they, we, like I think there should be the two things, and that's what is allowed with the web. We can go rapidly into really practical things together. I, I also think that uh, uh, eng engaging policymakers is a good opportunity to partner all together uh, because we are all trying to engage with policymakers. So we could share. Why are we? Why? Why are we doing that? Uh, well, I guess if you want to have impact and, and bring social change, you also want to know them and, and, and impact the, 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 the future of law so that they can benefit uh, the most people possible and also uh, share knowledge with them on how internet is impacting our lives also in a positive way, which is a major uh, challenge today, you know, when, when uh, Engaging policymakers, so I guess this is also something we could we have all in common. This is something we could uh, partner all together. Well, there's uh, there's another thing is I think you said it. I mean, there's it's a movement. Make, make there, the difference between a movement and a community is interesting. Maybe a movement is just that nobody stands you know stand out and say, hey, uh, we we are all together. But in the end, you're, you're working and, and making things move in the same direction with some, you know, with some friction sometimes, with some uh, differences, but it doesn't matter. It's just how the way things go. So I don't know if, it's, if, we don't, if we really have to always 
put a name and say, are, are we in or are we out? You've got different levels of community, different, uh, a very loose community can be a movement. And uh, maybe when, when, uh, when Antonin stood up and said, hey, uh, I think we're, we're doing the same thing, it became a community. And, uh, and because, because, you know, people came here today because uh, like the collaborative economies speak to them. So in a way, it's a, it's a loose community. We don't know each other, but there is something that, uh, that is uh, going in, a, in the same direction. And I don't think it's necessary to, to... Sometimes people can work in the, same, in, the, you know, in the same direction without knowing each, each other, and they are part of the same movement, and, and they collaborate without knowing it. I mean, they're all part of a, of a change. And it, I don't think it's so necessary to just always put a name on that. It's, uh, it's just happening. That's so um, I, I f actually forgot to say <laughs> that um, w we're using a hashtag uh, called Crea Comms, like creative comms with one M. And we actually have talked about sitting down, continuing the conversation afterwards looking at specific projects or initiatives that we might be able to do together um, and, and, and looking at three alternative ways of achieving more impact or maybe being more efficient with our use of resources. So one would be sharing resources, another would be co coordinating campaigns or, or, or working with common themes, and the third one is looking at scale. How do we help each other scale and deal with scale and fast growth? So we're going to be continuing this, and I think more concrete, and the communities involved would be, I guess, WeShare and, and the Open Knowledge Foundation and Edge Riders and, and, and Make Sense and, and Let's Do It. And this is, this is quite, a, put together, it's quite like a large, a large number of people. So if you want to join us and you want to sit down and just, you know, get down to the community gap <laughs> and, and <laughs> work it out together, you're welcome to join us outside. And I would leave the floor open to anybody in here that wants to ask any one of us or each other anything. Yeah, just about uh, the coherence in the community. Uh, my assumption is uh, we can create a community against something or with something. So we can create, for example, the sharing economy against a model of uh, an economic model we are not agree with. But also, at some point, I think all together here we are driving about the same values. And these values, and I think it's the same thing for whole, when, for whole society. It's a, a, a social contract between each other. So if there is a coherence in this community, it would be this social contract. And this social contract is obvi obviously first against something we, we not agree with, but at some stage, we have to structure and organize this in something with a framework. Not to say there is some people in, some people out, but there is some people with these values, and there is some people with, we, we don't, we, we didn't, which we don't be, belong to these values. Hi, I'm Stefania from Hackidemia. Uh, this was very inspiring. Thank you very much for sharing all these insights. And my question was about the red flags, like in the Make Sense uh, holdups. If there is one thing that you wouldn't do when you're building a community, what is that thing? And how would you transform it into a positive thing? Um, so. I start, then you follow, follow, follow. Uh, I mean, so if there's one thing I wouldn't do uh, if I start a community is to uh, 
say to people, OK, you can join and come in makes sense. But if I know that they don't know the rules of how it works, because then you have problems of people just following without knowing why they are there, what they are doing and stuff. And I think this is something that is really dangerous when you start a community to take people that come and join and they don't know like how it works, what are the rules, because then they don't know how to hack it, how to play with it, and they just follow what the guy that created the community says to do. And I think this is something like uh, so a bit dangerous. Ah, so what I would do is that uh, we just ask them a little questionnaire and we tell them when is, when is it the last time that they changed the rules uh, for something. So for example, someone says, so the last time I changed the rule, I was playing with my uh, little children and I was saying that each time he made a goal, I win. <laughs> so then we say, okay, that's the good pro <laughs> Come, come. <laughs> Okay, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to speak in, uh, in general terms because I've been involved in several community uh, formation processes. And I think that um, any community implies uh, not having uh, too much of a dictatorial uh, central coordination. I think community uh, requires shared governance uh, at some, to some extent. So I think it's very important to, uh, to be able to let go of some of of uh, uh, the, the, the control you may have had in the beginning of the community when you're only a small group. So uh, growing is a, is a good thing, but it's also uh, uh, a mechanism of compromise. And that's something I think uh, any community that's growing needs to, uh, to uh, realize and, and, uh, and adapt to. So, so that would be my, uh, that would be my uh, point. That question. Yeah, it's kind of the same point I wanted to make that uh, you shouldn't put leadership into the hand of one person. It's uh, b physically and psychologically very dangerous, and it's uh, usually you t run into lots of problems. So you should share it uh, or, or find ways to kind of core, core manage it, uh, go lead it, because uh, otherwise, uh, and also people have to kind of nurture themselves uh, if they are co-leading as well. It's like put on the oxygen mas mask on you before the others, so otherwise you can't help others. Yeah, I think the, the ability for the first or the two first leaders to let things go at some point is really important, but I also think that it's really important that one person or two people as, uh, have the leadership and have uh, strong leadership at first. So for one year or a year and a half, you need you need a leader. You need somebody to 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 lead the group, but then you need this person to say, okay, that's fine. I did my job. Now it's about you guys and 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 to to let things go. And this is I, I guess it's what happened at at Wisha. I did a lot at first, and 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 then when I saw that it was growing and 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 people were were um, getting leadership. You know, we we're talking about a lot about scale, and I really like this expression. We we don't scale a business model, but we scale leadership. So that's really what we want to do at WeShare. We have connectors, and, 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 and the first connectors uh, empower local connectors. And this, this is how we, we scale. Also, I think a challenge is, 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 not, is not to grow too fast uh, and, and to realize that what really matters is not to grow. Like, you know, we, we're using a lot of vocabulary from the business world, which is, I think, it's fine. I mean, you can change this, this vocabulary in, into your own. But like scale, do you re what, what is scale like? Like, I'm, I'm not sure that scale is the right word in, in the community uh, world. Um, so, so, so really, like, if you grow too fast, that can be also a big, a big issue because then you just don't know who's in the community, and and and, and it's really important that the the, the new people. Uh, share share the, the, the values and, and, and understand the, 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 the story of, of the start, I think. I guess my answer... Um, I, I, this is not like a universal rule. It has to do with me caring about the things that I care about. I would not build a community without a higher purpose and, and a clear goal that you're, you're striving towards and something that you're trying to achieve together. Um, uh, and, I, and, I, and the other part is I wouldn't, I wouldn't build a, a community that doesn't have the aim of impacting with people that are not like ourselves, those of us who are at the core. Um, and 
red flags, I guess, would be taking on too much of a business speak, like you say, within the, within the community, and um, thinking of yourself as a service provider. As soon as you're in the, you think of yourself as providing a service to the community and not building something together with other people, I think, and how you turn that around, I think, is by building, uh, building a culture of, of love and nurturing and trying to take care of each other as human beings in your community. Somebody's not well, you fucking call them or go to their house or cook them something, uh, you know. Try to be cool with each other and take care of each other. That's it. Okay. So I would compliment to that, that uh, do not be afraid to dream big. So that comes to the vision thing as well. I think we should be something for, do something for the society, for the environment, for the planet. So I think this is one of the core things. So, um, thank you so much. I think our time's up. But if you wanna, if you wanna, sit down and and and, and flesh this out, work on some stuff together, we're gonna be outside. Um, we're using the hashtag #CreaComs. And thank you so much. Take care of each other. <laughs> Love each other. See you around. <laughs> <laughs>